amazing similarities of the Nagas and the Igorots. Howdy everybody, welcome back. This is the third episode of our series. This is your Igor Guy Freddy. Kumusta kayo kakilians? Kumusta ba nang ispuyo? Sabay kumata, mayat kayo amin. If anyone there who is watching who doesn't know the Naga people, the Naga people are people of the Northeast India settling in Nagaland, Manipur, and other states in the Northeast India and the Northwestern Myanmar. And of course, the Igorots are the settlers of the Cordillera Administrative Region in the North Philippines. Although many of these similarities are now only part of history as they were obliterated by colonialism, religion, and modernization, it is also beautiful to look back and understand these things that are actually very essential for the future. But before we continue, let me talk about the sponsor of this video. We all know that during this pandemic, we gotta have a healthy body and a strong immune system. That is why Yuzian Masilanyu's Fitness Gym is here willing to take care of your body and health. Yuzian Masilanyu's Fitness Gym offers services for both men and women. They offer weightlifting, bodybuilding, cardio boxing, circuit training and toning, and Taibo with toning and abs exercise. What is more amazing is that they have the lowest price in the city, $450 per month. Yuzian Masilanyu's Fitness Gym is located at Desibar Building, First Basement, Bonifacio Street, Baguio City. It's just in front of Caltex Gas Station. It is owned and managed by Mr. RJ Mero. So what are you waiting for? Care for your health and body. So kakailians, ladies and gentlemen, these are the 12 similarities of the Nagas and the Igorots. Bonus part! Physical attributes. Naga people live in India, in the Northeast region. Anyone who has never got into deep with the diversity of Indian people would not expect that Nagas, who are considered Indians, look like just us. Many of us Igorots. Hunting. The Igorots are well known, especially the Bontok, Ifugao, Ilongot, and Kalinga for their head hunting tradition, wherein one warrior from a village goes on to hunt and chop off the head of a victim from the nearby village and carry it home as a trophy, which is subjected to feasting and celebration. <music> The Nagas also carried home the chopped off head of the victims as trophies and celebrated with all the other people in the village. The practice of head hunting was based on the belief that the great power lies in the human head. The last head hunting that was recorded in the Naga tribe in India was reported in 1958. The last recorded head hunting incident in the Cordillera was in 1976. Tattooing through rituals in many tribes of the Nagas. Their most traditional tattoos become sacred as marks of successful head hunting and warfare. Many lines and symbols were signifying also their beliefs. That is in the same case with the Igorots, especially the Bontoks, Kalingas, and even the Ibaloi tribe. The tattoos symbolize the number of human heads they've taken home, and even at the extent that the Igorot young man could not get married until he gets his first tattoo through a first human head trophy. In both tribes, tattoos were also done for beautification purposes. Settling close to the river and hilly or mountainous areas. Most of the tribes that are known to be headhunters lived nearby rivers like the Bontok on the banks of the Chico River, the Snakes on the banks of the Apayao River, and the rest of the Igorots lived nearby the tributaries and the mountains. The Nagas also settled in the hilly areas and by the banks of the rivers of the tri-junction of China, Myanmar, and India. Terrace system of farming and cultivation. By choosing to live on riverbanks and mountains, the Igorots subsequently 
they found themselves as masters of Teresa's rice fields constructions and cultivation. Like the Igorots, the Nagas also were mainly into farming and agriculture as their main occupation since the early days, the skill and practice that were passed down from generations to generations. Dormitory Systems in the olden days, the young Naga boys and girls slept in their separate dormitories that were called Murong. The Murong was the center of education to learn many important things in their lives. Different kinds of trainings were carried out in the men's Murongs. There are two or three Murongs, both for boys and girls. The young Naga men and women continue to live in the Murong till they get married. The boys could go to the girls' murong, but the girls were not permitted to enter the boys' murong. In the case of the Igorots, similar dormitory types were found prevalent in the Bontok and Kankanai tribes. The Bontok social structure has been found to be centered at the so-called ward. In the villages contained 14 to 50 homes. A great example is the Datal and Kalkal villages and wards of the Ginaang sub-tribes. Boys go to wards to socialize and play with other children. The girls do the same. Courtship happens in the girls' dormitories, and these dormitories are called kibug. That means sleeping board, and then it becomes a marriage system, a way of finding a person whom one can produce children. The culture, both for the Nagas and the Igorots, vanished upon the entrance of Christianity in the tribes. Practices of the Dead and Burial Many Naga tribes, just like the Igorots, exposed their dead close to the dwelling houses of the living and often kept the corpse in a period of time inside the house. They both have the practice of putting their dead onto platforms. The Feast of the Wealthy Shit in Ibaloy, Hagabi and Uyaui in Ifugao Zosu in Naga These culture are all the same, a thanksgiving public prestige feast of the wealthy that could last for weeks involving the butchering and sacrifice of many animals, dozens of them, including buffaloes and cows. The philosophy of Naga Feast of Merit is that the performer is honored when he's alive and remembered after death. The deeper part is the sense of generosity and the warm-heartedness towards the poor people who are fed during the occasion. Looms and Fabrics Weaving in the Cordilleras can be traced back to the ancient times. It's a method of fabric production in which two distinct sets of yarn or threads are interlaced at right angles to form a fabric or cloth. A loom is a device to weave cloth. It is purpose to hold the warp threads under tension to facilitate the interweaving of the weft thread. This has been a practice as ikat in Ifugao, the inable fabric of the mountain province and Benguet, the gilamat kain in Kalinga, the bahags, and all other that follows, including dying. In the case of the Nagas, their ancient tradition demanded that every home should have a loom. Weaving was considered an essential prerequisite for a marriageable girl, with forming the cloth and dyeing as a part of their skill. And as many years go by, fashion seems to be flourishing. And woven basketry. Igorot Naga The making of baskets was practiced by male Nagas in the past. It was never a profession as it was a part of daily life and activity that produced essential household items like baskets, 
carry firewood, food and grains storage. The Uyghurs also produced and commonly used baskets for carrying items on their back. The headboard would be traditionally attached to the basket with the hat sitting on the forehead of the user when worn. Pottery The best example for this is the Sagada's ancient pottery tradition. It's believed to be an indigenized culture that came from the neighboring countries for long long time ago. Sagada pottery can be traced back to the 16th century. Pots are still produced until today and the Igorots of the present use them as storage of rice and cane wine and these wines are brought out during honored feasts, rituals, weddings and ceremonies. In Nagaland, the art of pottery is also coming from the ancient times like the Cordillera. Aside from it being used as a wine storage, the Naga people also used them for cooking and storing food. Wood carving. When you hear the word wood carving, there is a single word that comes to mind. Ifugao. Yes, the Ifugao people are masters of not only rip wrapping, but also wood carving. Until today, they are known to be the excellent producers and makers of wooden decorations and furnitures. In the ancient times, the Ifugo people would carve a small human statue that is called a bulur or bulul. that was purposed to trap evil spirits away from the humans. Something that creates a misconception that the Ifugaos worship the Bulul, which is not. On the other side, the Wanchos, Konyaks, and Palm tribes are some of the finest wood carvers in the entire region of the Northeast India. Wood carving finds expressions mainly under three heads. Firstly, when head hunting. Secondly, with the decoration of the morong, the dormitories. And thirdly, the funerary images erected for other important people. Ornaments. The Naga people wore a trophy pendant masks as a symbol of bravery for head hunting. The Dung Dung hairdress worn by the Kadangyan women during the wedding ceremony of the Ifugao. Nagas wearing beads, cowrie shells, necklaces, and bangles. Igorot wearing ornaments. And all the other similarities that doesn't need any talking, but by only looking at them is amazing. Those are the 12 similarities of the Nagas and the Igorots. 
in case I missed something, please let me know in the comment below. I would be happy to read them. Thank you so much. Episode 4 will be coming up and we'll be answering a very, very interesting question. And it will blow your mind. I'm so excited for episode 4. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our Facebook page. Kakailians, thank you so much. I will see you again on episode 4. Cheers!